This is 7 and National News and in our top story. UA leaders have established a special relationship with their people based on strong dedication and allegiance to the homeland rather than on political ideologies. That's according to the UA Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The ruler of Dubai made the remarks while commenting on the tour that is currently being made by Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, to a number of areas in the UAE. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed added that the continuous tours are in line with policies followed by their forefathers, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan and the late Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed al Maktoum, who gave people across the UAE their full attention, a policy closely pursued now by the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan. Sheikh Mohammed affirmed that a true leader is he who understands his people and that such a trait is ingrained within the nature of Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, stating that such tours will support open door policies, strengthen people's allegiance and love to their country and consequently bolster the union and the development process. Banks across the GCC region currently lend only 3.85% towards small to medium-sized enterprises, the lowest in the world. The issue creates financial challenges for hopeful entrepreneurs and has an effect on the region's overall economic sector. In an effort to support UA nationals, an initiative titled Tejar Dubai was launched on Thursday by the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The launch was under the patronage and in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Majid bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the chairman of the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority. The objective of the program is to train Dubai's next generation of entrepreneurs and provide them with the necessary tools, abilities and industry know-how to turn their business ideas into a reality, as stated by His Excellency Hamad Bouamim, the Director General of the Chamber. His Excellency Burmim added that an esteemed panel of business owners will be providing theoretical and practical training for enrolled Emiratis, along with ongoing mentoring. Tejar Dubai, which translates to Dubai's merchants, will be tailored to suit the needs of the youth. Tejar Dubai, actually in English, it's uh, Dubai merchants. And what we wanted to focus on, it's really from merchants or the real merchants of Dubai to the future merchants of Dubai. Uh, this is coming from Dubai Chamber, the representative of the private sector in Dubai. We realize, based on a lot of studies we conducted, that a major gap we have between uh, the ones who have great ideas to the ones who really can execute them and make them successful business is a gap of development. So we are putting together a development program. It will be both theoretical and practical. Uh, for the ones who have these ideas. The percentage of lending to SME currently stands around uh, 3 to 4%. This is not only in Dubai and UAE, this is across the GCC. But if you look at the plans and the budgets, most of these banks really, they put 20 or 15 to 20% uh, potential uh, kind of funding and financing to SME. The biggest shortage they face that many of the businesses that come to ask for these uh, loans and uh, facilities, they don't put their act together. They are not well equipped in the right way. And this is the gap that we are filling. We want them to put the right business plans together. We need them to be able to present their cases to these banks. 28-year-old Aisha Al-Hashimi is the founder of Cocoville, a chocolate-making company which she started at the beginning of this year. A mother of two, a wife and entrepreneur, Al-Hashimi says Tejar Dubai will encourage the youth to follow their dreams. I think, first of all, it's uh, you. Uh, You should uh, believe in your brand. You should have that passion because... You know, you should even understand everything around the the chocolate making or whatever business you you're like you're doing. You know, because if you have all the knowledge and the science, that's where what's gonna drive your business even further. You know, and I think uh, for me it was I saw a niche and I was tired of like buying chocolates from the supermarket and I used to say no, we need something more fresh. We need something freshly made. 
And that's where I took the initiative to understand how it's all done. The UAE is currently ranked number 28th in the United Nations e-government survey out of more than 190 countries, climbing 21 places from where it initially stood in 49th place three years ago. In order to advance further, though, industry experts stress that a digital strategy needs to be developed. IT professionals from the Emirates, Bahrain and Oman carried out the second day of the 19th edition of the GCC e-government and e-services conference and provided an insight into how social media should be integrated into the public sector. GCC government entities all have online presence. However, the question is, are they using it effectively? This morning's panel stated that the GCC's public sector needs to focus more on their online networking sites. They should pay more attention towards engaging with citizens, increasing traffic and the optimization of the platform. Organizer of the event, Mr. Ali Al Kamali, the CEO of Data Matrix, says there is progress, but more does need to be done. The 19th GCC government is focusing on the fourth generation. When we talk about the fourth generation means now we need to be serious. Because now you are putting the policy, you are putting the roadmap. If you don't know what you want, you can. Now a lot of people are saying that we have to start a new e-government, which is let's say 2020, okay? And we develop a new one and we forget the old one. Just through the new one, reduce the services, be focused outsource some of it to the private sector and then you go but to say that if there are uh, <clears throat> progress the progress is there always but it's like um, you know non-focused progress is there is sort of random progress yeah so i don't think that will help and i don't think that will land in a good airport According to Dr. Usman Zafar, approximately 50% of the UAE's population use Facebook, along with other social media platforms. While prominent UA leaders and senior government officials are increasingly taking to Twitter to connect with the public. There are also close to 2.1 million active Twitter users across the Arab region, as stated in the Dubai School of Government's recent Arab social media report. Dr. Osman stated that while there are several success stories coming from the UAE, the challenge for federal and local government entities to be more active online still remains. If you look into most of the government departments, federally and locally, um, they do have online social presence, but they don't do much with it. So what I was trying to explain is like in order to have an effective return of an investment, so you have to have a strategy in place. So if you have the right social media strategy in place, so then it's much easier for you to basically roll out all those channels. So we have seen that many departments, they start it and then they you know, like stop it because of the lack of the policies and procedures. So if you want to do it, if you want to talk about an open government or sharing information, it is very important that you have to have that um, policies and procedures in place. And lucky enough, UAE is the first country uh, where Emirates e-government uh, in Abu Dhabi, they have uh, published the policies and procedures for uh, local and federal governments, so which can be used as a point of reference for the other government departments. UAE quite aggressively I mean, uh, publishing their messages on Twitter, Facebook and other things. So I strongly believe that, you know, I mean, in today's world, the time is essence. If you want to access anything online, so it's available online and you can get all the information. You just log in or you have a mobile device where you are able to access the services. So why not? So if you have a certain population available online, those who are well educated, they know how to use it and they are young people. So why not to come up with a policy or with the mobile apps or with some inter interactivity to basically pull them in, uh, which makes re really life of the people easy. Because you see, like we spend in Middle East millions of dollars in streamlining all those e-services. But the, the still challenge is like how many people are actually using those services. So why not to come up with some sort of an online participation program where you attract people, where you give them value-add services. So this is the, the whole point actually I'm trying to raise in this uh, conference and I think this is one of the best platforms. 
The Emirates Standardisation and Metrology Authority has announced that from next year, all food products claiming to be halal must have a halal mark and certification. According to a local daily, the announcement is a part of a halal package, which is also set to include cosmetics, perfumes, clothes and accessories. Mohamed Sali Badri, the Director General of ESMA, was quoted as saying that the move is a part of Dubai's leadership vision to make Dubai the capital of the halal economy. He added that each emirate has its own system to verify halal compliance at municipal level, but there are no general standards and regulations, and that the new system will also be a point of reference for other Islamic nations. Processing, the plantations, chemicals, packaging and the slaughter of animals will all come under the microscope. The first ever taxi service for women has been introduced into Ashman and the new pink fleet will be increased to 50 vehicles in the near future. 11 vehicles have been introduced into Ashman and under the name of the Mukhra service, where women now have the chance to choose between which type of taxis they would like to take. The service has been launched by the Ashman Public Transport Corporation and officials were quoted as saying that the corporation is dedicated in developing the transport sector and to increase the number of available options for consumers. They added that out of the 11 vehicles, six can carry five passengers and five can accommodate seven. The meter will start at three dirhams 50 and the salaries of the women drivers will be 4,000 dirhams in addition to a percentage of the profits. According to Euromonitor International, the retail of hair care products rose by 5% in 2011 globally. There has also been a rise in sales in the emerging markets, including China, India, Brazil, Russia and Mexico. Dr. Melik Kulachi, the founder and medical director of Transmed, a hair transplantation surgery in Istanbul, Turkey, says hair transplantation is fast gaining popularity among men across the globe. While they initially saw a largely European clientele in the past, she says the number of male patients coming from the GCC is also on the rise. While hair loss was something men took lightly in the past, she says the trend is now changing and a full head of natural and healthy hair is perceived as a sign of power and good looks. We are operating more than uh, 1,200 patients every year and 30% uh, of all our patients are com coming from abroad. <laughs> this was in a time, so approximately 10 years ago, we are a we are able to operate any uh, anybody from any country. It was at that time more more uh, European patients coming to our clinic. We opened up another European clinic in Germany. After that point, it started to raising uh, uh, upcoming the figures from GCC area. In last five years, the uh, numbers of our uh, clients are getting more and more from this area. With a growing interest, Dr. Melik and Dr. Ali visited Dubai to raise more awareness and educate the public about the solution to hair loss, as well as conduct consultation sessions. Experts also reveal that there is a rising number in female patients from the region, attributing hair loss to vitamin D deficiency. The Transmed Clinic offers a variety of services and treatments. Among these are the two techniques for hair transplants, the follicular unit extraction and follicular hair transplantation. The procedure is estimated to last between five to six hours and ranges from five to 10,000 US dollars. If you get your hair once after the hair transplantation, it is for your life long. It stays all your life. This is the best part of it. And second, this uh, hair doesn't need any special care. You just need to wash it and go out. Or you have to go to hairdresser every month like usual and you let it cut. And this is the only care what you have to do for your new hair. And finally, looking to other news now, Dubai-based Saudi national Raha Maharak 
finished her Mount Everest climb on Saturday, becoming the first ever Saudi woman and youngest ever Arab to do so. According to a local daily, the 25-year-old graphic design graduate from the American University of Sharjah was the only female member in a group of the four-member group Arabs with Altitude. The group was among a total of 64 climbers who successfully scaled Everest from Nepal's side of the mountain during a charity expedition. The Arabs with Altitude group also includes Sharjah-born Mohammed Al Thani, a member of Qatar's royal family. Rayed Zidan, a 41-year-old Palestinian real estate businessman who is a United States citizen, residing in Indianapolis and Dubai. And Masoud Kalafchi, an Iranian, also living in Dubai.